Hello, this video will be our, our Bible study for Wednesday, April um, 22nd, 2020. Uh, our starting verse today is Proverbs 28, which says, A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Uh, what is pictured here is, of course, a good king. Uh, to sit on the throne of judgment clearly implies that important decisions are to be made, perhaps a ruling between two opponents, or perhaps the passing of a sentence on someone accused of a wrongdoing. It is said that such a king uh, is said of such a king that he scatters away evil with his eyes. Um, the word translated evil has a wide variety of applications. Uh, it can also be translated as distress, mischief, uh, wretchedness. Uh, it's said that the king scatters such a way with his eyes, implying that he can see through uh, any kind of deception. Uh, whatever dishonest motives a person might have, the wise king can see right through it. The book of Proverbs tells us uh, some other things about a wise and just king. Proverbs 14.35 says the king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. Proverbs 16.10 says a divine sentence is in the lips of the king, his mouth transgresseth not in judgment. In ancient Israel, the king was expected to act in harmony with the will of God. Clearly, many did not. Even Solomon, who is credited with writing and collecting the, the Proverbs, uh, was not faithful to the Lord in the end of his life. But if a king was acting in agreement with the word of God, then his judgments did indeed have divine authority. Of course, there has never been a perfect earthly king. But let's look at our passage again um, and uh, bring in the next verse with it. So Proverbs 20, verses 8 and 9. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sin? If we consider that the Lord is the ultimate king, then we have to understand that he definitely sees through everything. Uh, you might deceive other people, but no one deceives God. Since God is the ultimate king and the ultimate judge, and since he sees through every deception, the question we have here is a very serious one. Who can say, I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sin. Well, let's shed some light on this question by looking at some other thoughts from God's word. Jeremiah 17, 9 tells us, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? There's a large number of people in this world who act in ways that clearly contradict God's will, and yet they think of themselves as good people. Now, it may be easy to identify uh, some such people. After all, um, there are those who are immoral people, there are those who um, are unethical, there are those who are caught up in cults. Uh, there are many who say they don't need Christ, and yet they think they're, they're good people. Um, these might be obvious cases, but sadly there are people in churches around the world who see themselves as good Christians while they are slandering and gossiping about others. Uh, I've lost count of, of how many times in 17 years of ministry I've had someone say to me, I probably shouldn't say anything, but uh, I've, I learned early on 
that such a statement is usually followed by sharing some kind of gossip or slander. So whenever someone says to me, I probably shouldn't say anything, I respond by saying, then don't. Uh, I've known people who were in every church service and yet spread rumors about others. In one case, the victim of such rumor spreading dropped out of church and never came back. The guy who started the rumor spreading was in every service. See, the point is every believer in Jesus Christ needs to be careful not to become what we see in Luke 18, 11, where, where Jesus uh, was uh, sharing a parable and he says, the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. This is an illustration of how easily human beings justify themselves while finding fault with others at the same time. We're told in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Human beings were made to glorify God, and we all fail to consistently do so. Only Jesus could say what he said in John 8.29. He said, And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. The best any of us can say is, I do sometimes those things that please him. We may want to see ourselves as good Christians, but we need to remember that the word Christian means followers or imitators of Christ to be a Christian is to be a serious student of Jesus Christ and of course a serious student is exactly you know the meaning of the word disciple to be a good Christian does not mean that one has reached some state of sinless perfection on this earth uh, we're not going to do that to be a good Christian means that one is always willing and ready to humbly learn from the Lord, to embrace His will, to accept His correction. And yet I've had people, when I give counsel from the Word of God, simply tell me, as I've read them a passage, I won't do that. I've had people say, as I've quoted the Word of God to them, I don't care. But the desire of a Christian should be that we are serious students of Jesus Christ, that we are truly willing and ready and longing to humble ourselves before him, to accept his correction and his guidance, to learn and to put that learning into action in our lives. Um, the desire we have should be similar to what we read in Psalm 119.11, which says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Notice the psalm, psalmist didn't just say, I've memorized some parts of scripture. He didn't say, I've memorized some scripture so I could impress other people uh, or so that I you know, could, could show that I have some knowledge. He tells us that he has taken God's word to heart for a specific reason, that he might not sin against God. That's his longing. When it comes to being good, we need to be realistic. In Matthew 19, we read about a man who came to Jesus with a question, and he addressed Jesus calling him good master. In Matthew 19, 17, we read, And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, God. Now the man was right to call Jesus good, as Colossians 1, 15 and 16 says of Jesus that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they are thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. You see, 
Jesus is truly good because Jesus is truly God. See, we can't depend on our own goodness because we have all sinned. We have come short of glorifying God. Um, if we were to count our, on our own goodness, then we would be without hope. Instead, we should be like David when he had sinned against God and he wrote, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And we really need to remember that we have received the gift of salvation. We have not earned salvation. We cannot say that we are better than others. But we can say, in the words of Psalm 85, verse 2, Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sins. Selah. Now that, that word Selah basically carries the idea of, of pausing to think about something. So think about the wonder that God has forgiven the iniquity of his people. The difference between the believer in Jesus Christ and the non-believer is not a matter of who is innately better. It is only a matter of who has accepted God's gift. The forgiveness of sin and eternal life with the Lord is that gift. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 say, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus died to pay for our sins, and those who leave this life rejecting him will know for eternity just what that means. Proverbs 5 verse 22 says, of those who reject Jesus, his own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of his sin. Those who reject the Lord will understand perfectly and very personally what that means. Now, let's get back to our passage, our starting place today, Proverbs 20, verses 8 and 9. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Though we might deceive ourselves into thinking that we can make ourselves clean, the Lord always sees through any deception. Let's be glad to accept his correction. Let's be those who are not... Uh, who not only know what his word says, let's be those who take it to heart, who desire to learn and to honor uh, our Lord more and more each day. Along with that, let's be people of prayer, prayer for one another and for those who have not trusted in Jesus Christ, remembering that on our own, every one of us deserves eternal condemnation. I, for one, am glad that I am not getting what I deserve. Jesus, the sinless one, died for my sins. He purchased the gift of eternal life, and I am glad to say that I have accepted that gift. So what about you? Can you say that today? Again, Ephesians ch uh, chapter 2, verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved, through faith. Uh, the word grace, the, the Greek word behind it, speaks of something that is freely given and beneficial. And there's nothing more beneficial than the salvation which the Lord provides. God's grace, his freely given gift of salvation, is accepted through faith. It is accepted when one trusts in Jesus Christ as the one who gave his sinless life to pay for our sins. There's no room for boasting in that. We didn't do any of the work. Jesus did all the work. What we do is we simply accept the gift. And you know, there are only a couple of things that anyone can do with a gift. You can receive it, 
or you can reject it. So child of God, remember that we are all imperfect, that we are all in need of God's grace. Be thankful that his grace is available to you. Be thankful for the gift you have received through faith in Jesus Christ. And then pray for those who you know uh, may not currently understand their need for Christ. Pray for them that the Lord will get their attention. Help them to understand that they need the Savior so that they too might turn to him and trust in him, in him and receive that amazing gift. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you.